Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go over some energy-related information, show you guys some charts too um, that I didn't create, uh, give you guys a little bit of different opinions than just mine, go over the overall commodity complex. Uh, so we're gonna go over some information, some charting and, and whatnot in this clip uh, to get you guys caught up to speed on what I'm reading and what's out there for the most recent news. So jumping into coal, coal to make up 85% of U.S. power capacity retirements in 2022. So they are retiring coal, and it will make up 85% of those retirements. Uh, this year, power plant operators have scheduled 12.6 gigawatts of coal capacity for retirement out of the total 14.9 gigawatt capacity slated to stop operations. So they're going to stop 14.9 gigs. 12.6 is coal. The expected coal capacity to be retired in 2022 accounts for 6% of the coal-fired generating capacity that was operating at the end of 2021. <clears throat> coal retirements averaged 11 gigawatts annually between 2015 and 2020, but slowed to 4.6 gigawatts in 2021. This year, the pace of coal retirements will pick up again. The administration said, noting that old coal power generators have faced increased competition on costs, efficiency, and emissions from natural gas and renewables. Going to the right. <clears throat> the U.S. has spent $1.1 billion on failed carbon capture projects in a decade. The Department of Energy provided almost $684 million to eight projects for carbon capture at coal plants. Only one of those which resulted in an operational facility the GAO found. Three projects, including two prior to receiving funding, were withdrawn, and one was built and entered uh, operations, but halted operations in 2020 due to changing economic conditions. The DOE terminated funding agreement with the other four projects prior to construction. Project documentation indicated that the DOE officials and project representatives told GAO that economic factors, including decreased natural gas prices and uncertainty regarding carbon markets, negatively affected the economic viability of coal power plants, and thus these projects. <clears throat> Looking at the bullish case for oil prices in 2022, it says OPEC, OPEC Plus is nowhere near pumping its overall quota. The coming oil glut could be much smaller than expected and could exert much less downward pressure on oil prices this year. Some people were thinking that there might be an oil glut. Demand remains robust as sign signaled in the six-month futures spread in Brent has more than doubled since hitting a low point in December. And this is really focusing on the spare capacity is shrinking. It says, yet all oversupply models rely on the assumption that OPEC Plus will actually deliver on its production target something it has not done for seven consecutive months. OPEC Plus has been undershooting its collective production targets for months and will likely continue to do so in the months ahead. African OPEC members lack the capacity and investments to boost production, while Russia is estimated to pump at, at an export lower volumes than its quota. The underproduction could even become a major upside for oil in 2022, especially if Omicron's dent to global oil demands remains limited to jet fuel as the most recent estimates and analysts and analysis have shown. Quote, <clears throat> the supply concern, which is not going to disappear anytime soon, is OPEC spare capacity. There are only a handful of members that have a, the capacity to increase output, whilst others are failing to meet their agreed production levels due to disruptions and lack of investment. Goldman Sachs, for example, is very bullish on oil for 2022 and beyond due to low investment in the sector and the fact that only two oil producers in the world, Saudi Arabia and UAE, currently have, a capa have the capacity and the means to pump more oil than they did in January of 2020, just before COVID. Everyone else is struggling, Jeff Curry, head, global, of head of commodities research. Uh, overall, demand remains robust as signaled in the six-month future spread in Brent, which has more than doubled since the December Omicron demand worry low point. Lower than expected supply growth could soon wipe out the certainty of a large oil glut as uncertainty and volatility will continue to be the only two certain things in oil markets this year. <clears throat> one last article over here. It's not a real big one. It says, can the world avoid a global oil supply crunch? The world may soon face a major oil supply shortage 
as spare capacity continues to dwindle and reserve replacement rates fall. The number of new oil and gas discoveries may have hit a 75-year low in 2021, highlighting a major issue for future production. The ESG uh, invest, investing craze and activist investors have driven money away from the oil industry, which may add to the pain and cost of the energy transition. Now, Patrick Karam threw up a, a chart on Twitter. I want to share it with you guys. <clears throat> This is crude, month, uh, crude oil's monthly Ranko chart. It's got $1 blocks uh, sizes. It starts in the year 1863, which is way back here. You can see this consolidation period, a breakout, and a big move all the way till 2008. We've been in this descending wedge consolidation period, moving sideways, and we've broken out to the upside of this breakout line over here. <clears throat> We've got an $83 breakout. Uh, what he was saying is that the roadmap, to, roadmap and the next stop is $140. I think that we might be able to stop a little bit at the $100 range uh, because we do have a lot of trading uh, through here. But I do think we're going to eventually end up at $140 and we're going to eventually end up over $200, $250 plus based off of the inflation. Supply demand will push it too. But we also have inflation in the system, which is getting more and more investors to pile into the oil uh, investment realm. So this chart looks very bullish, breaking to the upside, doing a retest and moving on up, just like it did in this breakout here, if you look at how we broke out and, and really took off. So oil could have a very good future ahead, right ahead of it. We could see a big move higher uh, of oil. Now, this one I just grabbed kind of, uh, th this was also North Stars on Twitter, the Bloomberg Commodity Index Linear Price Scale, uh, because uh, the Commodity Index will also have an impact on oil because it's in a lot of these indexes and whatnot. He said, I placed the black arrow price forecast on the chart <clears throat> in April of 2020. Uh, there's the big move higher. I haven't touched it since. It just keeps going up. And then we've got this kind of resistance zone that we're in a consolidation period which will eventually break and move to the target of 138 so it still has a lot of room to run to the upside uh, for the crb index and maybe that hits it at 2024 or something like that so uh, that's what i've got for uh, updates in the oil commodity complex uh, i think oil i don't think i don't think the capacity is there guys and i don't know when it's going to hit a lot of people say quarter four, 2022, early 2023 is where we're going to see a big move. We could see a big move before that because, remember, markets are forward-looking. So if we exceed pumping capacity in quarter four of 2022 or early 2023, um, this is going to be fireworks, guys. And the technicals align with it. The charts look really good on the short term. Uh, Medium term, they look good, too. So... I don't know. I'm holding on to my uh, oil investments. Uh, I am overweight in energy in general. Uh, that would include natural gas, uranium, and oil. Uh, so that's that's the sectors that I I really do like, and I think they're going to do well in the short term. Right behind this, I think uh, the metals will do incredibly well. Uh, copper's looking pretty firm too, so I think that one's looking uh, well as as well. So if you guys like this co uh, content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.